next on CTN News. We're focusing on distracted driving through the TZD program. Cracking down on distracted drivers, law enforcement officers across the state beef up patrols to make our roads safer. Plus, police are now asking for the public's help in solving an armed robbery that occurred at a local convenience store earlier this year. But first... It's a, a great program. We need more AEDs out there. We need more people to learn this. The Coon Rapids Heart Safe program takes on its biggest training initiative to date. That top CTN News this Friday, April 17th, 2015. Thank you for joining us. Students at Coon Rapids High School are learning how to save lives. Over the next month, all 9th and 10th grade students will receive academic and hands-on training in CPR and AED use. Eventually, the entire campus, 3,000 students and staff members in all, will know what to do in the event of sudden cardiac arrest. CTN's Joe Nelson reports. We want to see this in all communities in the state of Minnesota. Coon Rapids paramedic Paul Mendoza and police officer Brian Plotz have played roles in saving lives throughout their careers, but for the past two years, they've been on a mission to train thousands how to save others. This week, the Heart Safe group started the process of making Coon Rapids High School Minnesota's largest and second ever Heart Safe campus. We're really going to, I'm looking forward to helping these kids learn how to recognize cardiac arrest and start action right away. Tim Hoffman knows the importance of people being prepared and having automated external defibrillators nearby. I went on a cardiac arrest at work and a Coon Rapids police show up with an AED. Tim had stopped breathing and was clinically dead for seven minutes. Luckily, he had a co-worker at McCarthy Auto World who knew CPR and took action, saving Tim's life. When I recovered, I, I felt a sense of needing to give back. 550 freshmen watched a video telling Tim's story during day one of the training, teaching students the importance importance of giving compressions without breaths and how to use AEDs. We want all of Anoka County to become a heart safe county. It's a big undertaking, but I, th I think we're going to get it done. It can happen anywhere at any time, so people need to be prepared and be ready. Students are recognizing that they have what it takes to bring a heart back to beat. I learned that you could use the defibrillator and CPR right away instead of waiting a while. You can actually do something. Don't let the people die in front of you. I mean, it's someone's friend, it's someone's partner. You don't want to be the reason why someone died because you didn't step up and do anything. Have some courage. Coon Rapids sophomores will get their training May 6th and all freshmen and sophomores will have hands-on training on May 20th. A second phase of training will take place next school year for seniors and incoming freshmen. Stephen Karen. All people should learn the training. It's Great very program. well worth it. Thank you. Thanks. A reward is now being offered for the arrest and conviction of a person responsible for an armed robbery back in January. It happened the morning of January 20th at Kathy's Dairy Home located on Hanson Boulevard. A clerk and two customers were assaulted during the robbery. Newly released surveillance photos show the suspect inside the store. Described as a black male in his early 20s, 5 feet 6 inches tall. He was wearing an army style jacket and a stocking cap. Investigators say he was in a pickup or rather picked up in a gray or silver Dodge Charger type vehicle. Anyone with information is asked to call Coon Rapids Police 763-767-6481. A wild police chase ended in the northern part of Coon Rapids Wednesday afternoon. It all started on Highway 65 when Blaine officers responded to a report of a burglary in progress. The suspect, 34-year-old Randy Vaught of St. Francis, refused to stop and led police on a chase westbound on Bunker Lake Boulevard and then south on Hanson Boulevard. Before being stopped, Vaught crashed into two other vehicles and five squad cars. A mother and her infant, along with a Blaine police officer, received minor injuries after being struck head-on by the fleeing suspect. Well, each year in Minnesota, distracted driving contributes to one in four crashes, which is why law enforcement targeted distracted drivers this week. It's all part of a multi-pronged approach to stop what's become an epidemic on our roads. CTN Steve Antis joins us now with more on what's being done to curb the distractions. Steve? Steve and Karen, stopping distracted driving starts with us. Now we can all admit to being a distracted driver at one time or another, which is why the Minnesota State Patrol is asking passengers who ride with a distracted driver to speak up before it's too late. So we lost her at a very tender age. V.J. Dixit talked to students at Anoka Ramsey Community College about the death of his 19-year-old daughter Shreya back in 2007. She was a college student who was riding as a passenger when the driver got distracted, lost control of the car, and crashed. What we are trying to do is take that grief out and turn it into something positive. 
and into something meaningful so that we can save lives. Dixit's focus is on young drivers in partnership with Metro Minnesota Towards Zero Deaths program. Nationwide, drivers in their 20s make up 27% of the distracted drivers in fatal crashes. We need to transform our driving culture in Minnesota to a culture where even one life lost on our roadways is too much. Constant changes in the flow of traffic make driving unpredictable. Distracted drivers were on notice this week with extra enforcement on Minnesota roads. We will look for behavior that will indicate to us that that driver is distracted. The Minnesota State Patrol posted their stops of distracted drivers on Twitter. A 20-year-old female was stopped by a trooper on Highway 169 for texting. It took her a mile before she noticed the lights and siren. A lot of the stops were specifically for texting. Coon Rapids officer Steve Bieberg issued citations up and down Main Street as part of the distracted driving crackdown. Right now it's right around $135. Part of that is a fine, part of it is a surcharge that's attached to all traffic citations. VJ Dixit hopes to educate young people to help build distraction-free driving communities through the Sharia R. Dixit Memorial Foundation. When we created this foundation, as something that is doing good for the community, I think she would have completely endorsed that idea. Police say anyone riding with a distracted driver needs to speak up and offer to help the driver avoid distractions. Tell them to put down the phone and drive. It could help you avoid being a statistic or worse, losing your life. Make the right choice and speak up. Stephen Karen. Thank you, Steve. Very important reminders. Work is expected to start next week on a major reconstruction project in the city of Ramsey. The project involves the reconstruction of the Highway 10 and Armstrong Boulevard interchange and railroad overpass. This week, the Anoka County Board awarded the $27.7 million contract to Lunda Construction Company. During construction, two lanes of Highway 10 will remain open in each direction, but motorists should expect some temporary lane closures. The project should be finished by the end of October. To the east, a safety improvement project will get underway on Highway 10 next month. MnDOT will be adding a cable median barrier between University Avenue in Blaine and Interstate 35W in Moundsview. Currently, there is just a grassy median which can allow cars to cross into oncoming traffic. Officials say the cable median barrier will greatly reduce the risk of cross-median crashes. The DNR is seeking public input on a statewide plan to combat invasive carp. The Minnesota Invasive Carp Action Plan includes 35 measures for combating the threat of big head, black, grass, and silver carp. It updates a 2011 document and focuses on efforts to monitor, prevent, and slow the spread of invasive carp in major rivers and lakes. Since the 2011 plan was developed, DNR officials say tremendous progress has been made, including repairs to the Coon Rapids Dam and the upcoming closure of the Upper St. Anthony Falls Lock. Still to come on CTN News, music shows on the ice and in the theater. Plus making safety plans in the event of severe weather. Also ahead, a big announcement from the Minnesota United regarding a new professional soccer stadium. Details coming up. But this is giving people an outlet to reuse that equipment. And saving youth sports equipment from the trash. How you can help when we return. It is Severe Weather Awareness Week in Minnesota. Which is a good time to plan ahead in case severe weather strikes. <laughs> On Thursday, the siren sounded at 1.45 p.m. and again at 6.55 to allow schools, businesses, and families to practice their plans for taking shelter. In Minnesota, on average, there are 40 tornadoes each year. But that's not the only severe weather risk. Lightning, floods, and the heat can also be deadly. If you have kids who play sports, you know athletic gear doesn't come cheap. Now to even the playing field and to put new life back into old gear, the Minnesota Green Expo is asking for donations. CTN's Jenny Yu tells us all about the gear grab. The gear grab is a great opportunity for people to reuse sports equipment. Ashley Marston is the sustainability manager at the National Sports Center, and she says sustainability goes beyond recycling bins. Last year we got a number of items. We got hockey skates in, lacrosse sticks, softball gloves, baseball gloves, cleats, breezers. This is the gear grab's second year at the Minnesota Green Expo, and donations are still needed before April 25th. We need any gear you're willing to give. I mean, 
any sporting equipment that you have that's sitting in your garage, we will gladly accept it as long as it's in usable condition. And for some kids, that's where they get all their equipment. Kelly Scott is the activities director at Coon Rapids High School. He's seen how donation programs like the gear grab can make a difference. We run across kids here at Coon Rapids High School all the time that need that kind of help, that need the help, you know, to, for a racket, you know, a, a, a tennis racket or, or need, you know, shoes. He says the cost of hockey equipment can especially be expensive for parents and kids who are trying out the sport for the first time. It gets them involved. It's, it's a thing that grabs them and brings them in. And in the end, donations will help even the playing field so that kids and even adults have the chance to play sports they otherwise can't. Take the dust off the stuff that's sitting in their, in their garage or sitting in a closet, sitting in their basement, and let somebody else put it to use because you got to remember back to when you were getting started, remember back how hard it was, and, and now you, you're in a better spot, pay it forward. In Anoka County, Jenny Yu, CTN News. You can drop off items for the gear grab at the National Sports Center, the Coon Rapids Ice Center, or the Coon Rapids Recycling Center. The Green Expo takes place on Saturday, April 25th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the National Sports Center in Blaine. Admission is free. In addition to browsing booths, you can explore a tiny solar house, get up close to alternative fuel vehicles, and learn how to green up your parties and graduations. There's also great prizes and giveaways. To learn more, log on to mngreenexpo.org. The Minnesota United are planning to use private funding to construct a new soccer stadium in Minnesota. Late last month, the team learned it won a bid to become the 23rd team in Major League Soccer. A celebration was held at Target Field, not far from where the new stadium will be built. This week, the team announced plans to construct a stadium without direct public subsidy. The total private investment in the team is $250 million, including $150 million for land acquisition and stadium construction costs. Students at Anoka Ramsey Community College are staging their spring musical this weekend and next. The original production of Flavio Betrayed, a Comedia, takes place tonight and tomorrow and again April 23rd through the 25th at 7.30 p.m. The high-spirited, highbrow comedy is about romance, deceit, friendship, and stinky cheese. It was written and being directed by Anoka Ramsey's own theater faculty member Scott Ford. Tickets can be purchased in advance at the college bookstore at, or at the door the night of the performance. The Coon Rapids Ice Center is gearing up for an annual tradition that celebrates the accomplishments of local skaters. The 26th annual Ice Fantasy Show will run from April 23rd through the 26th. Tickets can be purchased at the door prior to each performance. This year's theme is skating under the big top. Skaters range in age from four to adult. There's also two guest performers. Figure skating aerialist Colleen Okulski will appear Thursday and Friday, and U.S. bronze medalist and 2013 junior world champion Joshua Ferris will perform Saturday and Sunday. Lots of laughs as actor Kevin James rolls back into theaters this weekend on his segue for the sequel to Mall Cop. Howie Shapiro has a preview of that and more in this week's Now Showing. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2. Six years of keeping our malls safe, Paul Blart has earned a well-deserved vacation in Las Vegas. I, like you, didn't choose security. Security chose me. Oh, 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 sweet mercy. I am so sorry, oh, ma'am. It's my fault. Are you gonna want turn down service? I don't know. Is this here the whole time? Uh, it's just probably a glitch. Well, the glitch just typed. Unfriended. A group of online chat room friends find themselves haunted by a mysterious supernatural force using the account of their dead friend. I'm signing off. No, 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 he'll kill you. I'm a god, you hear me? Why is he counting down? No, no, no. Maya and her very curious newborn, Kip. They're playful, adventurous, and facing the world together. Monkey Kingdom a nature documentary that follows a newborn monkey and its mother as they struggle to survive within the jungles of South Asia. What makes somewhere home is family. If I was king of the world. I'm Howie Shapiro, and that's what's showing. All right, thanks, Howie. Lots of laughs and cuteness overload. Right, right. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching, and join us again next time for CTN News.